Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan gets two-week bail in craft case. UN warns aid shortage to push Afghan children towards deadly malnutrition. And Sri Lanka plans to electrify its army of tuk-tuk taxis. Now for all the details, a Pakistani court on Friday ordered former PM Imran Khan's release on bail for two weeks in a corruption case a day after the Supreme Court termed his arrest illegal. Commenting on deadly protest over the arrest this week, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif said the relief to Imran Khan is nothing but a free pass and death of justice in Pakistan. In a big relief, the Islamabad High Court on Friday ordered former PM Imran Khan's release on bail for two weeks in Al Qadri Trust case after his arrest ignited deadly protest and a tussle with the military. Jubilant supporters erupted into song and dance as the court also ordered the anti-craft body not to arrest Imran Khan during this period until May 17th. This came a day after the Supreme Court ruled his arrest in the case invalid and unlawful. Khan meri aankhon ke samne aayega inshallah meri khushi ki intiha hai meri khushi ka aise samjho main main pata kya bol raha hu mujhe ye bhi nahi pata Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Friday termed the court's ruling as death of justice in Pakistan as at least 8 people were killed in the violence that broke out over Khan's arrest on Tuesday He said Khan has been given a free pass the violence has worsened the country's instability and doused hopes of resumption of a crucial IMF bailout. And motorcycle traders in Pakistan have lamented that bike sales have dropped significantly due to the severe economic crisis in the country. Unable to pay fuel costs, some people are even getting rid of the two wheelers. A report. Soaring prices of all commodities, including food and fuel, amid the ongoing economic crisis in Pakistan, has dragged the motorcycle sales to a record low. Traders lament people are preferring to buy second-hand bikes due to the shooting prices and shrinking purchasing power. Those who already own two-wheelers are also getting rid of them as they struggle with their maintenance and fuel cost. कि ये हर महीने हर डेढ़ महीने हर दो महीने बाद ये जो इंक्रीज करते हैं रेट इसको कंट्रोल किया जाए ताकि ये मोटरसाइकिल गरीब की सवारी है तो गरीब की सवारी गरीब को मिल सके ये ना हो कि गरीब पैदल चल रहा हो साइकिल पे चल रहा हो मोटरसाइकिल से महरूम हो जाए और आए दिन गरीब आदमी मोटरसाइकिल लेता है आए दिन की ये खबर आती है कि मोटरसाइकिल चोरी हो गई तो इसलिए कि गरीब आदमी तो बिल्कुल मर गया है भाई बात ये है पहले इमरान खान साहब आए थे तो गाड़ी पचास हजार की हो गई थी चालीस से अब नवाज शरीफ आ गए हैं हमारे तो गाड़ी एक लाख से ऊपर चली गई सत्तर हजार रुपए कहाँ जा रहे हैं ये समझ में हमें भी नहीं आ रहा पाकिस्तान इन्फ्लेशन रोज टू अ रिकॉर्ड 36.4 परसेंट इन द ईयर टू अप्रैल द हाईएस्ट रेट इन साउथ एशिया एंड अप फ्रॉम मार्च इज थर्टी the latest government measures for an IMF bailout, including higher taxes and fuel cost, are hurting everyone. Many say they are cutting down on necessities to make the ends meet. While the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF Chief Melanie Galvin in Afghanistan has warned of a critical funding gap to provide essential medical food for severe acute malnutrition in the country. Galvin noted that this year, 875,000 children in Afghanistan suffered from severe acute malnutrition and without treatment, it is life-threatening. This comes a day after the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs expressed concern over running out of funding for humanitarian assistance in the country. The UN estimates that 28 million people in Afghanistan require humanitarian aid and the Taliban's restrictions on women have worsened the situation. 
Well, in an effort to provide relief to political perpetrators of criminal offence, a bill has been registered in the Nepal's parliament to give impunity to lawmakers, local media outlet The Himalayan Times has reported. The proposed bill will allow the government to withdraw cases against political leaders even if the case is under consideration in a court, the report suggested. If this happens, those found guilty in the Tikapur Khanage incident, including Resham Chaudhary and the absconding MP Lakshmi Mahato Koiri, among others, will get impunity. It is being argued that legislation has been registered for that purpose. And in a bid to move towards affordable energy options amid the ongoing economic crisis, Sri Lanka on Thursday launched a project to electrify half a million of its tuk-tuk taxis over the next five years with help of the United Nations Development Programme. With more than a million tuk-tuks running on petrol in the country, a shift towards greener and cleaner vehicles would cut Sri Lanka's carbon emissions and reduce its reliance on fuel imports, something it struggled for months to pay for when the country's reserves dropped to record lows in April last year. The UNDP will fund the conversion of the first batch of 200 petrol tuk-tuks under the project. An electric tuk-tuk can travel 80 to 100 kilometers per charge, but with very few charging facilities, Sri Lanka's tuk-tuk drivers are skeptical that this is practical. And Bangladeshi tourists have resumed movement through the integrated check post at the Indo-Bangladesh border in Fulbari after almost three years. Although the Indian tourists use the same ICP to reach Bangladesh. The movement of visitors from Bangladesh was halted owing to COVID-19 pandemic. According to the local traders, the tourist inflow is currently low but is expected to soon gain momentum. Bangladeshi nationals also expressed happiness over the development. Darjeeling, Sikkim, Nepal, Bhutan. इसीलिए यहां से टूरिस्ट करना बहुत आसान होता है and the seventh edition of joint military exercise Ajay Warrior between India and the United Kingdom concluded on Thursday. The two week long military exercise conducted in the Salisbury Plains saw participation of the 2nd Battalion of Royal Gorkha Rifles from the host and India's 6th Battalion of the Bihar Regiment. During the exercise, both armies conducted field training exercises and tested their operational acumen in various simulated situations. Ajay Warrior is a biennial training event which is conducted alternately alternatively in the United Kingdom and India. The last edition was held in India's Uttarakhand state in October 2021. Ajay Warrior is our flagship exercise between our two armies. It's a biennial exercise and the purpose of this, this opportunity is to try and uh, increase, of course, interoperability between the armies, but also to learn from each other. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.